Welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I'm Adam. Um, so, uh, so yeah, back at it. Um, starting out with the uh, continuation with a movie that just came out, White Boy Rick. Um, if you go into this movie expecting what the trailer kind of sells you on, which is the trailer's job to sell you on, you know, the movie you're going to see, you're going to be, I don't know if disappointed is the right word, as much as um, not expecting what happens. Um, it's based on a true story, um, told very well for the second half of the movie. The first half of the movie feels kind of, uh, weird and disjointed. Um, but then by the time the movie does catch its stride, by the time the second half picks up, um, I'm going to spoil it, obviously, because of the title of the, of the show. Um, right after he gets shot, um... Then it goes, and it, it kind of catches its stride at the point where he gets shot. And then from there on, it kind of makes sense. And that's where some of the strongest acting performances and um, the strongest acting performances come out. Um, from uh, Matthew McConaughey, from Ty Sheridan, from uh, the girl who plays his sister, who I don't remember her name, because I don't think she was a, a big-name actress prior to this. Um, I'd never seen her before in anything. Um, but... That entire second half of the first half of the movie, what the trailer is, it's like kid informant for the police, um, goes out and uh, reports on crime, uh, reports and you know gets people thrown in jail. Um, the second half of the movie is uh, very different. The second half of the movie is him uh, going and um, like actually going out and being a drug dealer by himself. Um, which seems to be the actual, like, uh, what the movie's about from there on. And it's telling the story of how he made the decision and why he made the decision to go out and continue dealing drugs without the backing of the government. Um, so that, um, that's the problem. is Now, the movie tries to paint it where, uh, it's like we should blame the, uh, the FBI for it, um, which would be true if they threw him in prison after making him deal in the first place, but he told the FBI and the, uh, the homicide division and all that, that he was out and didn't want to do it anymore. Then he goes back into it to try and write his family. But unlike, uh, Goodfellas and all these other gangster movies, which are fictional, um, fictionalizations of, uh, real events as is this, but, uh, unlike those other ones, they, um, this one actually, uh, he doesn't go in and try and get greedy. His whole thing is about trying to bring his family back together. So he's uh, he's trying to bring his sister back from being a junkie and bring her back into the family. Uh, get his, his dad a nicer house. Move move away from where he is. Hope his dad start his business and go straight and all of that. Um, but they, uh, what's it called? They don't really... Um, the, the first half of the movie where they're, you know, him working with the police is probably the weakest part of the movie. Because uh, then after he gets arrested and um, all of that, and after he gets shot, you have, uh, when they go and retrieve the sister, it's pro- from then on, it's all just heartbreaking. Um, the scene of Matthew McConaughey carrying, um, what's it called, uh, carrying the daughter out of the, like, the, uh, the, the crack den and just carrying her out while she's screaming and crying, and then her going through the withdrawals as she's detoxing. And, um, the whole thing is just emotionally devastating. And then the movie, you would think, ends on a, it does end on a high note. It ends on, um, him on, like, you know, anytime a movie like this happens where it's like, and then this, it's like they have the text at the end, it's like, uh, instead of an epilogue, it's like a text epilogue about what happened after that. Um, and it's just like, he, uh, he did eventually, uh, get out of prison, um, even going against what the law was, is he does end up getting life in prison uh, at the end of his trial because the feds don't really help him out any, uh, getting him off, um, despite saying, look, if you turn on these people, we'll get you out, we'll help you get past it, and we'll help you, you know, go on. And then he turns on the people, and then they don't help him anyway. Um, so it's kind of fun. Um, and they, um, despite that... Um, he does eventually get out because they overturn the law that would require him to work in, uh, that would require him to, uh, serve life in prison for the nonviolent offense. Um, but 
uh, the movie ends with him finally getting out 30 years later, and it's a uh, a voice recording of him talking. I think on the it sounds like on the phone. It's a voice recording from his from a phone of him saying like, "Oh, I can't wait. I'm finally get out. I cried when I found out I was going to be getting out on parole." Um, I, I can't wait to tell my grandparents when I go visit them at their graves. And that's how the movie ends. And it's just so heartbreaking. Um, because, like, the last thing we see of, uh, Ty Sheridan and Matthew McConaughey, um, together, it's, uh, it's kind of like, um, Rick gives up. Uh, Rick Jr. gives up. Um, and he, and he just accepts what he is in prison. And he's stuck there. Um, so the movie goes from... Him going out and doing stuff like that. Um, and then it goes from there to making a murderer. Um, but a dramatization. So again, you don't know how much of it is not uh, is accurate and how much of it happened the way it did. Because even in the movie, the FBI is disavowing any involvement. And the uh, the ending doesn't lend any credence to what happened. And we don't know if it, anything happened the way it actually did. That's that's the thing. Considering there's no scenes of um, Jennifer Jason Lee, whose performance in this movie can best be defined as she's there as well, um, her partner and the uh, the Detroit PD guy. There's no evi- There's no scene of them with anyone else indicating that there's a, a second a secondhand testimonial to say any of this actually happened. Um, beyond the dad, the dad and the son, who are both shown over the course of the movie to, if they're the ones telling the story, be unreliable narrators, um, to begin with. Um, considering the fact that it looks like a lot of it is only things that were privy to the son and the dad, it looks like one of them was involved in the, uh, in the accounts. I don't know if it's based on the book. I believe that two FBI agents and a Detroit narcotics detective would hand four thousand dollars worth of crack cocaine to a fifteen year old say, "Hey, go sell it and get back to us um because that feels like something that like a bunch of people would say that's a terrible idea um but there are a lot of things in that iffy and it 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 comes down to the fact that the uh, the person the information's all coming second hand from someone involved if someone's involved in it, they're not going to want to make themselves look bad, so it's like, oh well, they did this, they did this, they did this." But it's just easier to just, you know, you need to look objectively beyond what happened and see if there's any actual evidence uh, suggesting that uh, any of the claims are true. Um, maybe I'll look into it. Maybe I'll see if this was based on a book and read the book. I don't know. Um, but the movie is definitely worth watching. I would, I would definitely recommend you see it. The first half's a slog, um, but the second half uh, got the emotional payoff. It's definitely worth it. Um it's so it's so good, um, especially toward the end. It's it's it, it's like uh, Rogue One, where you can kind of forgive the fact that the entire first uh, seven eighths of the movie is not that great, just because of the ending. This movie, you only gotta forgive half, um, because the ending and the ending is is so good, um, and it, it's such an emotional gut punch. The entire rest of the movie, um. Because they do such a good job of show, making him look like a patsy the entire time. And he doesn't know any better, so he just goes along with it. So, um, so yeah, we'll wrap it up there. If you haven't seen this movie already, it is opening week. Um, so maybe go see it um, instead of seeing Predator. But, uh, yeah, we'll end off there. Uh, the next movie we have on Wednesday is going to be Peppermint, uh, the new Jennifer Garner uh, revenge action movie. Um, and we'll uh, we'll be back then with that.